Here's the thing. Everyone should fight in their marriage. And if you don't fight, you don't have a healthy relationship. You may be thinking, did she just say what I think she said? Yes, I did. But here's why. Because conflict in a marriage is healthy. It shows that you are secure enough to disagree, to speak up, and to learn how to compromise. Several years ago, there was a study from the University of Washington that shared that it's not fights that ruin marriages. It's a couple's ability to reconnect after a disagreement happens. Even if they end up not agreeing on the subject at hand, if they can figure out how to agree, then their marriage will stay strong and become stronger. But if they fight and then they can't connect positively after a fight, it ends up ruining the relationship. But it happens so often in our relationships that we don't figure out how to reconnect positively after a fight has happened. We fight. We want our way. We want our spouse to agree with us. And when they don't, we get mad. We get angry. And many times we tend to do something that if you do this in your marriage will increase your likelihood of divorce dramatically, which is also based on research from the University of Washington. So what is that one thing? I'll tell you in just a minute, but first let me introduce myself. My name is Kimberly Holmes. I'm the CEO of Marriage Helper. And at Marriage Helper, we have taught hundreds of thousands of people the things that they can do to make their marriage work. And we've been doing that for the past 20 years. Every week, we are sharing new, relatable, and relevant relationship content that actually works in marriage. So be sure to subscribe and join our awesome tribe. Subscribe, and if you hit the bell, you'll also be notified every time we go live, release a video, or any of the other really cool things that we do here. And we'd love to have you be a part. So here's the thing. When my husband and I first got married, we had been dating long distance. There were some things that we didn't know about each other until we got married and actually started living together and seeing each other on a daily basis. And I realized very quickly that there was one glaring problem. He continually left the toilet seat up. To him, this very logical person, his thought process was, logically, it takes more work for me to put the toilet seat up than for you to have to tap and put the toilet seat down. Gravity is on your side. So if you're the one who needs the toilet seat down, then I'm making less work for you by keeping it up because all you have to do is tap and put it down. So it's really only an inconvenience to you. This is his thought process. Me being the more logical in my perspective person, the one who's more emotional, who thinks about things a little bit differently, I said to myself, oh, I'll break him of this. His mother said he was highly trainable, so this should be easy. So after our first week of marriage dealing with this, I ended up having way too many midnight swims in the toilet, way too many early morning wake up calls as I fall in. And I had asked him, I had demanded him, I had tried to use logic with him to just remember to put the toilet seat down and nothing was working. So I called in the big guns. I needed to prepare for war. So I slipped on my black pants, my black shirt, my black boots. I got the war paint out and during the night after he fell asleep, I jumped in the car and went to the place where you always have to go to get the things you need the woman's military surplus store, Target. I enter seeing other women out on their own missions, some of them to reconnoiter a new wardrobe for their husband, trying to figure out how to replace his old dirty underwear, whatever it is. But me, my mission, duct tape, hot pink duct tape. So I gathered my goods, I get home, I tiptoe into the bathroom and slowly but perfectly adhere the toilet seat right onto the toilet with hot pink duct tape. Just like our marriage vows, what God has put together, let no man separate, and that was how this toilet seat was gonna be, never to come up again. And a reminder for Rob to think before he ever again says to me, it's really only an inconvenience to you. So the next morning, as I awake from my graceful slumber, much like any military leader who has defeated their enemy would have, I hear Rob in the bathroom but I hear him ripping off my duct tape. And then, and then I hear the sound of a toilet flushing and I think, surely I'm not hearing what I think I'm hearing. But then 
I begin to see water flowing out from under the bathroom door and realize that my husband, who might be one of the most intelligent people I know, was not smart because he flushed the duct tape, the hot pink duct tape. Why? How is that logical? He's supposed to be a rule follower. Don't the rules of life say that you don't flush duct tape down the toilet? It's sticky. It doesn't go down easily. So he comes out, he's angry, he's mad, he's wet, and he's a little sticky, asking me to call a plumber. To which I responded, are you an idiot? I mean, are you really that stupid that you would flush duct tape down the toilet? To which he responded to me of, are you the idiot? You're the one who tried to duct tape the toilet seat down to try and control what I was doing. Ultimately, here's what we were saying to each other. What is wrong with you? See, so often when we fight, instead of focusing on the problem, we turn our spouse into the problem. If you were different, everything would be better. What we are telling our spouse, whether we mean to or not, is something is wrong with you. You aren't right and you need to change for me to love you. It's called contempt. You've probably felt this way before, right? Maybe in your marriage or maybe growing up or maybe in your job. Somewhere at some time, someone has made you feel like something is wrong with you and you shut down. You probably wanted to distance yourself from the people who made you feel that way. And the same goes when our spouses feel that way. They want to distance themselves from us. Or if your spouse has made you feel that way, constantly berated, put down, like you can't do anything right, then you have probably wanted to distance yourself from them. The toilet seat wasn't about the toilet seat. From my point of view, I had asked him to do something that would, in my eyes, show that he valued me that he cared for me, that he wanted me in his life, that he wanted to share his home with me. But when he didn't make that change, I didn't feel loved or respected. And it hurt me. And out of my hurt, I ended up hurting him. But from Rob's point of view, it was not nearly that deep or emotional. It was a toilet seat. But when I started trying to control him and how he felt controlled and he felt disrespected, he ended up taking that out on me. We both ended up becoming defensive and we both ended up saying things that hurt each other. But in my mind, I had created a story of what he was thinking, what he was feeling, and what he was doing. Was he in the wrong? Was I in the wrong? We weren't in the wrong, we were both just approaching it wrong. And here's what I learned. It takes two things to make relationships work. Number one, we need to remember that our spouse is not the problem. The problem is the problem. You see, when we were having that fight, which I wish it could say that that was the stupidest fight we'd had, that that was the only fight we've had, but it's not true. My husband and I, we have very stubborn personalities. We fight a lot. And early in our marriage, those fights would blow out of proportion and they would last for days or weeks or sometimes even months because ultimately what we were doing was just fighting against each other and making the other person the problem as opposed to boiling it down and figuring out what is the core issue here. Most of the time, the core issue was that one or both of us didn't feel loved, liked, or respected. But instead of starting there, we were starting with attacking each other, saying, what is wrong with you? We had that contempt against each other. And when you have contempt in your marriage, in your fighting, in your arguments, and in your disagreements, that is what will make divorce happen quicker than anything. If you just stop the contemptuous behavior, if you just stop saying to the other person in these words or in words similar to it, what is wrong with you? If you just stop doing that, it will decrease the likelihood of divorce so much. The second thing that we need to do is assume the best about the other person and not the worst. It is still often to this day that if Rob and I are in the middle of a fight that I will verbally say to remind myself and him, I'm on your team. It can be very easy that we forget that we're a couple. We are on each other's team. We're not supposed to be against each other. We're supposed to be working through things together. And sometimes you both need the verbal reminder of, I'm here for you. I'm on your team and I'm gonna see the best in you right now 
and not the worst. And here's the third thing. It's okay to get help. It is not a bad thing to get help for your marriage, but there is such a stigma about it. And I can understand why. To say that you need help can be embarrassing. It can maybe make you feel like you made a mistake by getting married in the first place, or maybe you fear bringing up hurts from the past, or maybe the help that you have received in the past made everything worse and you don't know who to trust. At Marriage Helper, we want to remove the stigma of getting help for your marriage. Our vision is to help people with their relationship issues in a way that is positive, effective, and honestly, this word may seem a little strange, but fun. We want to remove the images of sitting in a room on a lonely couch, feeling uncomfortable with a box of tissues, and we want to enter into a picture of talking to real people who have been where you are, who live life just like you, and want to help you make your marriage better. And sometimes we have fun in the middle of that. Because we believe that everything that is worth anything in life takes work. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth anything. And your marriage is worth everything. And you shouldn't have to figure it out alone. That's why we're here. And as of now, my husband and I are going on nine years of toilet seat fight free. (laughs) Which sounds ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. But sometimes we fight about stupid stuff. But the stupid stuff we fight about ends up becoming a huge deal and we begin seeing it in every area of our relationship. And that's how marriages start going downhill. Here's what I'm saying. Over the past nine years, Rob and I have learned tactics that help us learn to fight well and to end the discussion feeling respected and understood, even if we don't agree with each other, as opposed to tearing each other down and ruining the marriage. At least we're able to do that most of the time. We're still not perfect. We still have to apply this and be aware of it and implement it in our daily lives because that's real life and that's real marriage. It's never gonna be perfect. It's never gonna be easy. And if it were perfect or easy, it wouldn't be as valuable. It's worth fighting to make your marriage stronger. If there's anything we can do to help you, we at Marriage Helper have workshops, online courses, and marriage coaching that you can use from anywhere in the world because we care about your marriage getting on the best track possible. You can call us at 866-903-0990 or you can visit our website anytime at marriagehelper.com. We're always here for you.